Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how I created this pixelated page transition in Webflow using GSAP. But before we dive into Webflow, I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel for quite a while now, and I figured this would be the perfect first video, uh, because when we launched this project a couple of months back, it got so many positive responses, and I specifically got a lot of questions on how I created the pixelated page transition that I just showed you. And since it's not, not even that difficult in terms of code and the amount of code that we need, I figured it would be perfect for a first video. Um, so yeah, let's get into Webflow. All right, so in Webflow, I have set up two pages, a home page and an about page, just single sections with a link block uh, so we can navigate from and to a page and show our animation. Um, and first we're going to create the actual grid with the, all of the cells that will animate. So inside of my page wrapper, I will create a load grid. And the load grid will have a width of 100%, a height of 100VH. Uh, let's see, we'll set a position of fixed on all sides and a z-index high enough to cover everything else on the page. And then we'll set the display to grid. Make sure that there is no gap between any rows or columns. And then you can add as many rows and columns as you like. Um, so if you, for example, just want eight big blocks to be the animation, that's totally fine. I'm going to set it to be 12 columns and eight rows. So we'll have 96 cells in total. Let's see, I'm going to click done. Inside, I'm going to put in a div, which I'm going to call load grid item, which has a width of 100%, same as the height, and then a solid background color. That's it, so it just covers a cell. Now I am going to copy this thing and, oh, sorry, moving it around, copy this thing and paste it inside of my load grid enough times so it completely covers the page, like every single cell. So you can just hold down Control or Command V, so it goes very quick. There we go. And after that, I'm going to set my load grid to be display none, so we can still interact with our page while we're inside of Webflow. And then I'm going to put it on the other page as well. Let's see. Okay, cool. Now we have all the HTML ready, and now we're going to get into the JavaScript part. And to do that, I always use a code sandbox. I think a lot of us use it these days. So I've linked up a file over here. And I put in the GSAP core library, which you can get from the installation page. I'll put a link in the description just in case. And you can just, like since it's always checked, you can just copy this piece and put it in your page. I've put it on both pages. Ideally, you would put it just like in a site settings custom code. Uh, but since I'll uh, leave this project as a clonable, I figure this would be easier. Cool. So with our grid, Inside, we're going to publish the page, and now we're ready to go. I'm going to refresh, and the first thing that we'll do inside of the JavaScript part is that we are going to run all of this code only when the document is ready. So on document ready, we're going to run a function. Uh, this ensures that uh, we only the code will only run when all of the HTML elements are loaded on the page. So the first thing that we'll do is that we'll set up an event listener on every single link. And like the A is a, the HTML tag for a link. So on click, we're going to run a function. For that function, we'll pass in E, which will stand for event, and which is our object. I'll explain it in just a second. Because this E, um, it contains information on the link that we just clicked meaning we can make sure that we prevent the default action from running, which would be going to the new page. So if I save this, I refresh here on the left, I click, nothing happens. Even though inside of Webflow, our link is set to go to the About Us page, but it's not, which is good. <laughs> now we do want to make sure that we save the page that we're going to as the destination. So I'll just make a variable, call it destination. And that is equal to, let's see, uh, from this, and this refers to the A tag that we just clicked. 
I'm going to take the href. So the href, if you don't know, if we open up the inspector of our a tag, the href is the uh, how the destination is saved. So now we have our destination. That was the wrong button. I want my side view. Cool. Now um, we unclick. We prevent the default action from running, which is going to the new page. We save the variable so we can go to the page at a later point and we'll start creating our GSAP animation. So the first one will be just a set, which is an animation without a duration. It just happens instantly. So we can set our load grid, open brackets to be a display of grid. So if we save this and I refresh on the left, I click, it sets my grid to be a display of grid, which is what we want, but we don't want that to happen instantly. We want every single cell to animate in. And for that, we'll use a from to tween, which is basically a Webflow interaction that has an initial state, which would be the from part. And then the to thing is the actual animation that we'll do, which has duration and all that. So for that, we'll have the load grid item. Let's see. And this is our from state. So the from state will be an opacity of zero. Let's see, open up some new brackets. And the two state that we'll go to is an opacity of one. If we now save this and refresh, nothing will happen, uh, except for that it just fades in, which I believe is like a default, a from two tween is like 0 0.5 seconds and a linear easing, but we don't want this to happen so slowly. We want the duration of the blocks to be instantly. But since we can't work with a duration of zero, we'll set it to something very close to zero, like 0 0.001. And we want each of them to come into view uh, over a total duration of 0 0.5, meaning that GSAP will calculate the offset and delay between each item over a duration of 0 0.5, and you don't have to do that manually. And we want this to happen from a random part. And that's it. If we refresh now, our blocks animate in, which is part one of the animation. Because as soon as the page is covered in blocks, that's when we want to change to the new page. And then on the new page, we just play the same animation in reverse. So GSAP has this very cool callback, which is incomplete. This allows us to run a function like this as soon as this tweet tween is complete. What we can do is that we're going to set the window.location to be equal to destination, which is our variable. So if we now refresh the page and I click the link, as soon as the tween is ready, we go to the new page. So now we got the uh, in animation working, and now we just make, need to make sure that on the new page that we get, the animation plays in reverse. So that'll be quite simple. We'll just take this from to a tween put it on top here, change it to a two tween, so we can get rid of the first bit, and we'll animate it to an opacity of zero. We can get rid of the incomplete for now. Reason is because uh, in Webflow, the load grid items already have an opacity of 100, like they're visible, um, so we don't need to set like an initial state. But um, I can show you what happens. We just need to make sure that uh, on the new page, the load grid is set to display grid because on default it's set to none, which if I refresh now, and nothing happens because I can't click. Reason is because even though the load grid items are set to an opacity of none, they are technically still there. So we do have to get back that on complete function to set the load grid. Let's see, arrow function to set the load grid uh, to a display of none. You can just copy this, change it. Now if I refresh and I click the link, it works. Now we do see a bit of a flicker, which is because uh, JavaScript takes a little while to execute usually on a page, which is that flicker on the beginning. Um, and we can avoid that by getting rid of the grid here 
saving this and going into Webflow and use CSS. And we'll put that in the head tag over here. Since CSS is executed, especially like here in the head tag, is executed before any um, JavaScript, we can make sure that we avoid the flicker um, by, let's see, opening up some style brackets. I'm going to set the load grid to have a display oh, of grid. And if I save this now, I'll put it on the about page, just to be sure. And if I publish, we'll see that we have avoided the flicker. And if I now click the link, everything runs very smoothly. And as at the exact moment, the page is covered in orange boxes. Uh, that's when the page changes. So it looks invisible and it feels very smooth. Now there is some a little thing that we can add to this um, just to make sure that we cover some specific use cases because now this listens to every single link on every page. But there could be links where you don't want to play this animation, maybe like anchor links that scroll you down the page or a link that opens up a website in a new window leaving you with like a, an orange covered uh, website here if you would come back to it. And um, yeah, so we can make sure that we check for such use, use cases by putting it in an if statement. And let's see, make sure that we get all this code and put it inside of here. Now we can check for a couple of things. So the first thing that we'll do is that we make sure that we stay on a link that stays on the same page, which we can do with the following. Let's see. We make sure that the host name, so the actual URL, the base URL, is equal to the window.location of the current host, um, which is similar to setting the location here. Now that's making sure that we stay on the same page. We can do a double N which is so we can add an argument to this if statement. So we can also make sure that we don't go to an anchor link, which we can do by this dot. I'm going to check if the attribute, the href, equals like a, um, starts with the hash sign, which is uh, when you have an anchor link that goes down the page. So we can check that by doing this. We check the index, the, so the amount of hash signs like this, and make sure that it is equal to negative one, meaning that there is no uh, hash sign inside of this URL. And to make sure that we don't open a link on the new page and play our animation, we can make sure that the, let's see, target is not equal to blank like this, if I am not mistaken. I believe I got this from a very old video of Timothy Ricks. So thank you, Timothy. I still use it uh, to this day. And if we now, um, to resume, we double check if we stay on the same page, we check if it's not an anchor link going to this page, and we check that to make sure that the link that we click does not open and a new tab. And if so, we run our animation that we just created. So if I save this and refresh, it still works and we did cover ourselves for any specific use cases. So yeah, I'll leave this project as a clonable on my profile in the description. I uh, hope you found it useful. I'm be curious to see how you guys use this technique to create your own cool page transitions. Um, so if you do, post them somewhere on Twitter or Instagram and make sure to tag me so I can see them because um, I'd love to see and I'm looking forward to creating some more videos and hopefully teaching some of you to create cool stuff on the web. So see you in the next video. Cheers.